Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome on this fine day. Why don't we uh, get up and just shake hands with each other and exchange signs of the Lord's peace. Maybe say hi to somebody you've yet to meet before. Good to have our whole crew back. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Kelly Weinberger, Next Generation Minister here at the church, and I want to welcome you both in person and online, and it's going to be a beautiful day. And we know that it is in the middle of finals, and I'm Pastor Susan, the associate here, and it is amazing to see you guys this morning. This is wonderful. And we know that this is a real tough week this week because so many of our college crew here has to do finals this week and they have graduation. We're going to lose a few of them. So keep them all in your thoughts and prayers this week. 
I'd like to invite you all to our Advent Study Halo series. It's for our youth and our children and our families. I sent out an email this week to um, let you know what, what we were doing this week, so I'd like to invite all of you. This is something that is really designed for families. We're gonna talk about what the angels saw, and it's just such a special time of year, and that's from six to seven tonight. So all youth, parents, middle, high school, and anyone that wants to join us, we would be happy to have you. The other thing that we want to let you know about, we've still got about three weeks, but on December 21st, we're going to have the Blue Christmas service. This is the service that is for those who have a hard time during this season, and it is really emphasizing the fact that we are bringing hope through the Christmas holidays. So if you're having a hard time with all the glitz and glamour, come join us for a different experience in worship. Next Saturday, the 10th, we will be going to Pal Gardens. This is open to all of our congregation. We first thought, oh, this would be a great opportunity for our kids, but we want this to be an all-church event. We'll be leaving here Saturday at 4. We do have a bus, but if you'd like to drive and bring your family, that would be great. Um, I think the more, the merrier. This is a beautiful experience. They will have warming stations, hot chocolate stands. Um, it's just a wonderful family event. We do have a sponsor that is sponsoring all of us to go that is a member here of the church. So if there's any way that you can join us, please do. I'm so excited about being able to share this with, with all of us. And we have so many things going on. You know that our Christmas Eve service, we have a 4 o'clock and a 7 o'clock. And then on Christmas Day, we will have a 10 a.m. peaceful Christmas morning service. So we have a lot going on. We hope you are going to enjoy it with us. I just have one more uh, announcement that I'd like to share with the congregation. I'll be going to Nutcracker today. Uh -oh. There are two um, performances today, one at one and one at five. And so we have several of our young uh, congregations, con congregants that are in this place. So if you have an opportunity, it's at Hendricks Hall and it will start today at one and then there'll be another one at five. So there's a lot going on and we really hope you enjoy it with us. This is December 4th. It's the second Sunday of Advent, and we have with us the MBCAA representative because our disciple gift is their organization. So she's going to come and share a few words with us. Good morning. My name is Rachel. I do work at Missouri Valley Community Action Agency. I um, talked to Peter this morning and told him it's been a while since I've done any public speaking. He said it's like riding a bike, and I let him know that I tried to do that recently, and I really just don't recommend it to anyone. Um, but <laughs> I wanted to touch on a couple of things that we are able to provide families in the area because of First United Methodists. Um, the first thing is we have a funding at our agency called Family Support Funds, and this funding goes to families who are over income, which is over 125% of the poverty level. At our table that we've set up down at the lobby, I do have a list of what 125% of the poverty level looks like for families of different sizes. And um, with those support, with those funds, I've been able to help a single dad get his power turned back on, a widowed mother pay her rent, um, a nuclear family of five get tags for their cars so that they can continue going to work legally. Um, it comes in handy all the time, and we're really glad to have that. We also are able to help the um, Head Start kids here with the clothing donations that you guys provide, and that takes such a stress off of the parents because it's the holiday season, and parents want to be the ones to do the fun stuff for their kids. They want to be the one that put, you know, the smiles on their face on Christmas morning because they bought the toys. And they want to secretly be really grateful for the new shoes that the kids got. And I know that that seems like such a little thing. And little things look different to everyone. Um, this time of year, we hear all the time, you know, be grateful for the little things, be grateful for the little things. But I think that what's really important is we all take a step back and look at what the little things mean to us. For me, what's little in my life that I'm so glad I'm able to do is 
anytime I have a bad day, I do have the money available that I can go to Casey's and I can get a Dr. Pepper and a Snickers bar and just get over it. You know, I had a bad day and I'm able to relieve that. And that's the little thing in my life. But for the Head Start families, the little thing in their life is they did get a new Christmas coat and also they were able to buy a new toy for their kids for Christmas. So Caitlin and I will be here um, between services. I hope that you'll come by, ask us any questions you want. Tell me I did a great job this morning. And then I do have note cards. I want you to write down what a little thing is in your life. And I'm gonna send those later so that you can just compare and see what something is to someone else and hopefully be more grateful for the things that you didn't even realize were important to other people, okay? But thank y'all for letting us be here this morning. So thank you. Remember this as we go through the month when it is so important for our congregation and our ministry here. I want to begin our service with the lighting of the Advent wreath, and we're going to have two of the crew from the praise group. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, so this is going to be a repeat after me thing, okay? Okay, so some of us are short, some of us are tall. Some of us perform ballet, some of us play ball. Some of us are young, some of us are old. Some of us like warm, some prefer the cold. Everyone is different, but one thing stays the same. God loves every one of us and knows us all by name. All of us can follow wherever God may lead. And all of us can show God's love to those who are in need. Amen. ask you all to stand and worship with us. I have decided, I have resolved to
chains be broken lives be and I would like you to please join me in prayer today. Dear Lord, we thank you for this Sunday that you've given us, and we'd like you to bless our hearts with your love today. We'd also like you to please consider our friends and family that are in need of uh, prayer today. Will you please join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For nine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand for the reading of the scripture. <coughs> from Isaiah 11, 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the winged child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. From Luke 1, 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. 
the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is a sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At this time, I'd like to invite the children and the young at heart to come forward. Good morning. Look at this. I think it's a red day. Look at all this red. Everyone's in the holiday spirit, aren't you? Yeah, but you know what? Green is just as good for the holiday spirit. It's just like our trees. It brings so much joy and smile to see the holiday colors out. This morning, I have a question for you guys. How do you get messages? Where do messages come from? Have you ever gotten a message before? Oh, a text message? How else? Ooh, messages from God. How do you get a message? Do you guys get any messages from the mail or the phone? You know, I bet there's some older people out there that college kids back there, maybe messages from Snapchat, Instagram, all these different places. But you know what? I like getting messages from God. And this month, with the holiday season here and the approach of baby Jesus, we are talking about getting messages from the angels. How would you get a message from an angel? Do you think you would see it? Would you feel it? Maybe. Yeah, we can feel it with our Holy Spirit in our hearts. Ooh, maybe the angels are talking to you in your dreams. Maybe you hear it. Maybe the angel gave the message to someone and said, hey, go share this to spread the news. So we are going to find how we can hear the angel's message about baby Jesus being born in the coming weeks. And that's pretty special because then we get to take that and share that message with our friends and our neighbors. You think we can do that? All right, let's have a little prayer. Heavenly Father, 
We hear your message. Let us take your message out to others. Amen. All right, let's head to the rainbow rooms and see what the angels are telling us in there. you all to please stand again and worship with us.
I liked my vest so much that I just thought I'd wear it again. <laughs> it's been a while, a couple, three weeks, since we had our October vest celebration when we celebrated investing in our church, our community, and our world. And we got together in the Family Life Center and had a great lunch and great fellowship. And we're very thankful for that. The finance team thought it would be a good idea to keep you posted on how things stand. So as of today, we've received 75 pledges that give us a good foundation in developing next year's budget. We're not there yet, but we have every confidence in the generosity of our congregation. We have to say that truthfully though, we're a little bit concerned about inflation and the impact that might have for us next year, just like we all are at home too, of course. And we learned just this last week that we're gonna have a major repair that we need to do in the Family Life Center where we have to replace the roof in its entirety, about a ticket item of about $30,000. So we'll work our way through that. And we, there again, we have every confidence that we'll work our way through it. So we have a great congregation and we are very blessed and it's our, as we are in the Advent season, we're keenly aware of God's gift to us through Jesus. And we're also aware that our gift to God is through his ministries, his ministries through this church. So your generosity is the blessed way in which we grow our church, in which we keep it a safe and warm place to conduct his ministries and in the ways that we reach out to those in our community and our world. Thank you for all you have done and for all you continue to do in his service. Thank you. Breathe on me, breath of God, breathe on me. Breathe on me, breath of God, breathe on me. I come alive, I'm alive when you breathe on me. I come alive.
So I'd like to uh, welcome everybody today that's, that's worshiping with us to uh, our message series during this Advent season that's called Halo. And this uh, series, we're going to be looking at the way that God sent messages, you know, into our world uh, to people like you and me through angels. And if you were here this last week, then you know that, you know, God uh, occasionally, you know, sometimes uh, will send these angels into the world to deliver big, exciting news. And that especially happened uh, during that very first Christmas, that angels were sent uh, to Mary and to Joseph and to Zachariah and Elizabeth uh, to let them know that God was coming into the world. So I'd like for us to reflect uh, together on this question. You know, what good news would you want to hear from an angel this Christmas? Now, maybe your idea of some good news this Christmas is something small, like, you know, maybe you're thinking about what's one special Christmas present that I could receive that I've really been wanting. Or maybe it's something like if you, uh, have young kids, you're hoping that your family is going to call you this Christmas season and say, you know, instead of uh, us, you know, you driving to us halfway across the country, we're going to come and visit you in Missouri uh, during this Christmas, and you don't have to get in the road and do a lot of driving. Or maybe if you're a student, you know, like uh, you guys that are in college right now, or some of our high school and middle school students, you're thinking maybe Christmas break can go on forever, and uh, school is not going to resume anytime soon. Or maybe your idea of some good news this Christmas season is a lot bigger. Maybe it's something like, as you get together with your family during this Christmas season, that it's a time for you to grow and uh, you know, encourage each other, and you have a wonderful uh, time together as a family, and there aren't any arguments, there aren't any fights, or something like that. Maybe you're uh, hoping for the good news that someone in uh, your family or one of your friends uh, receives health and healing after they've gone through a time of uh, disease and, and hurt. Maybe it's taking steps during this season towards achieving financial security, or it's the healing of a marriage within your extended family. This year, if Christmas looks something like this for you, if, you're, if your desire for your Christmas list is, has something big on it, then know that you're not alone, because there is good news, that Christ is coming. Almost 3,000 years ago, long before the very first Christmas, God's people, the nation of Israel, they were looking for good news as well. Generations earlier, God had promised Israel that it would be a thriving nation under God's protection and that God would do amazing things through them, that God would bless the entire earth, all of the peoples through the nation of Israel. But suddenly, something happened. Israel was conquered by enemy empires, and they were divided, and they were struggling. And the people of Israel, they, they forgot who they were, and they turned their backs on God. And the wealthy and the powerful members of the community, they started to take advantage of people who had less resources, those that were in need. And there was brokenness, and there was fear, and there was injustice, and there was sin everywhere they looked. And in that moment, whenever the situation seemed beyond repair, then God stepped in to history with some good news. And a prophet named Isaiah was sent to the people of Israel on God's behalf. And he gave them good news, and he gave them uh, this message. I want to read uh, to you today from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. A shoot shall come out of the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out from his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. And so we have this, this message that, you know, comes from God and speaking through the, the prophet Isaiah, that God is going to send his chosen one into the world, that God is going to send a Messiah who's going to lead them with justice and peace. The word Messiah refers to a person who would rescue God's people and make God's will become a reality in this earth throughout history, where all the wrongs of sin that have been caused are healed through him. The Messiah wouldn't be like other rulers of the past. They wouldn't be just another king who sinned and turned away from God and looked towards their own personal ambitions. God's promised Messiah would be good, just 
and faithful. And the coming of this Messiah wasn't just wishful thinking. Through Isaiah, God promised a Messiah was on the way. But since God didn't give Isaiah or the people of Israel an exact time or an exact date, God's people waited, and they prayed, and they trusted. The prophets like Isaiah were the first kinds of messengers from God. But God sometimes used other kinds of messengers to speak to humanity as well. The scripture tells us how God often sent angels to communicate important messages to the world. Last week, we spoke about how the angel Gabriel came and he told the prophet or the priest Zechariah how he and his wife Elizabeth, who had been waiting to have a baby for such a long time, were going to have a son and that he would be blessed and he would do amazing work for God. And today, we're going to see how Gabriel made yet another announcement of another pregnancy to yet another couple. But this one was even more unexpected than the first. Hear these words from Luke chapter 1, verses 30 through 32. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. So, Jesus, or, uh, so Mary and, and Joseph, they had to be uh, surprised at this news. And um, I wonder if you can relate to it in this way. Have you ever received a Christmas present that uh, you know, looked really nice, that had a you know, nice wrapping paper, and you opened it up, and whenever you looked inside, uh, you thought to yourself, you know, what in the world was this person thinking whenever they gave this present to me? Um, you know, as we enter into the Christmas season, uh, probably a lot of us have different Christmas movies that, that you enjoy watching as, as a way of getting in the spirit of the season. If you haven't seen A Christmas Story, uh, which I, I would recommend that you go out and, and uh, rent it, there's a great scene where Ralphie, who's about eight or nine years old, uh, opens up this box from his aunt, and inside of it he finds this a giant pink a bunny set of pajamas that his mother makes him put on And uh, he comes downstairs, and he's just horrified because he wonders if his aunt thinks that he is a three-year-old girl. Uh, He just can't believe that he's gotten this present. Well, I wonder if that's how Mary and Joseph felt whenever they heard this announcement from Gabriel, or at least at first. You know, of course, it was, you know, um, such an honor, and it was was amazing for them to hear that they were going to have a child, and that this child was, uh, you know, announced to them by God. But they know at the same time that this is going to change their entire lives. Mary and Joseph, they weren't married. Uh, Mary was still a virgin, and this development in their lives was going to create a scandal. It was going to change the way that people uh, looked at them and, and thought about them and talked about them in the town that they grew up in. Even though what Gabriel shared with Mary and Joseph was the fulfillment of God's promise to save the world, they had to be surprised that about the role of God was calling them to play in this story. So that's why Mary asked the question, how is this even possible? And it's why Joseph considered calling off the marriage. They both knew that being pregnant under mysterious circumstances would permanently change their lives. But despite all that was on the line, Mary and Joseph both eventually realized that the angel's news wasn't an inconvenience, it wasn't a burden, it was good news. And in fact, it was the best news. In the big picture of God's story, this is exactly what God's people had been waiting for. Jesus, the baby Mary and Joseph would raise together, he was the Messiah that Isaiah had written about so many centuries earlier. In Isaiah's time, the people of Israel couldn't have predicted how God's promise to send a Savior would one day come true. But the good news that he was on the way was enough to sustain them, generation after generation. And in the same way, whenever Mary and Joseph couldn't move forward into the future to see uh, what would happen with their newborn child, and they they couldn't imagine uh, what he would become and the way that he would change the world, They trusted in God's promise all the same. They waited patiently on the Lord. In time, the baby that God promised would grow up to change all of history. 
And Jesus, the Messiah, he would reconnect every human with the God of eternity, with love and forgiveness. And that through his ministry, history would be changed forever. Mary and Joseph, they realized the good news of Jesus wasn't just good news for them personally. It was good news for the whole world. And the good news of Jesus Christ is good news for you and for me today. What Mary and Joseph learned on that first Christmas is what you and I might need to be reminded of today as we worship God and we look for inspiration and hope together, that Jesus is good news. Even whenever we don't see how God is working, even when we can't understand why things are going the way that they're going, that Jesus is good news whenever we're afraid of what we don't know and can't predict. Jesus is always good news. No matter how scary or confusing things seem, no matter what's going on in our lives or in our world, Christmas is a reminder that Jesus is with us and that he is good news for us and for everyone. I want to share with you a story from, from our congregation uh, that I think it helps us to, to hear the good news of Jesus Christ as it lives in our lives today. Um, Paulette Moore, you may know her. She's a member of our church. She's been a member of this church for, for many uh, different years. She shared this story last week at youth group whenever we were uh, studying the scriptures together. And uh, she told us how um, several years ago she was working as an ER nurse and had a, had a wonderful career where she was able to, you know, um, you know, felt called by God to step into people's lives and, and to be there with them, you know, sometimes during the, the most challenging moments of their lives as they had major health issues. And uh, several years ago, uh, there was a new supervisor that, you know, came into the hospital where she worked. And, um, you know, over time, they started to have some kind of personality conflicts, you know, her and her supervisor. And uh, finally, it got to the point where, um, you know, there, there was, you know, kind of, a, kind of a conflict, and then Paulette was laid off. And she thought to herself, you know, how did this happen? Um, you know, I really, um, you know, believed and felt like I had, you know, at least another five years of, of good work left in me, that I could, I could serve other people as an ER nurse, you know, during that time frame. And she went through a time of questioning, and she spent a lot of time in prayer and really asked, you know, Jesus, why did this happen? Um, you know, what, what purpose do you have for me, Lord? And, and um, you know, she understood that she didn't know what the answers were, but she prayed and asked for God's grace. And in her time of prayer, uh, she heard this message uh, loud and clear that, you know, God had a purpose for her, that that there was uh, going to be a great opportunity that would open for her. A few weeks later, she was uh, talking with her extended family, and one of her daughters uh, said, you know, um, my grandson um, really needs somebody to, to watch over him and care for him. And, um, you know, I wonder, I know it's a big, a big ask, but, you know, what would you say to coming and moving out to Minnesota where we live? And, you know, you could kind of care for him and, and take care of him during these really important formative years in his life. Um, for most of Paulette's 18 uh, grandchildren that she has, isn't that amazing to have 18 grandchildren? <laughs> for most of the lives of those other grandchildren, you know, she was working, you know, uh, doing 12-hour shifts as an ER nurse, but she felt like Jesus was really calling her uh, during this season to, to be the one that got to teach her grandson how to count by, you know, taking cookies and stacking them. And, you know, in the summertime, going out to the creek with him and, you know, walking in the mud and feeling the mud between your toes and, you know, waking up with him in the morning and reading to him uh, the stories of Jesus Christ and celebrating the Christmas season with him. And so, you know, she heard the good news of Jesus Christ that even whenever it felt like it was, it was such a loss and such a disappointment that there was a real opportunity for her uh, to answer God's call to ministry and for her to enjoy being a grandmother and spending time with someone that was so dear to her. As we wrap up our time uh, together today, I wonder how you'll respond to the good news of Jesus Christ coming into the world, the good news that the Messiah has come and has changed the world and is changing the world today and will continue to change the world for generations beyond how we can even imagine. How will you respond to this amazing news of the birth of the Savior? Well, first, I want to ask you to consider responding to Jesus Christ for the first time. If uh, this is your first time to worship in a church, and if you've, uh, this is your first time to really, you know, hear about 
uh, the message of Jesus Christ and his invitation to have a relationship with you, then I would encourage you today uh, to, to pray about his love and his forgiveness and to consider answering his invitation to have a relationship with you in your heart. Spend some time praying and asking God to be with you and to receive his salvation and forgiveness. If this is the first time that you've responded to the invitation uh, to faith and to become a Christian and to live with him, then uh, share that with somebody. Now, you can come talk to me about it or talk to uh, someone uh, that's a part of our worship team, uh, but don't let this uh, story just be between you and God. Share it with someone else so that you, we can celebrate with you and encourage you in your faith journey. Maybe during this season, as we respond to the good news of Jesus, this is an opportunity to ask for Jesus' help. Maybe right now in your life, there are many things that are going on that, are, that seem difficult and overwhelming. Maybe because of mistakes that you've made in your life, or maybe because of circumstances beyond our control. Jesus' birth is proof that God has not abandoned us, and God has not abandoned you. No matter what you're going through, Jesus is with you and able to help. So spend time praying and asking for Jesus to guide you through the challenges that you face. And then finally, in response to the message of Christ, how can we share the good news of Jesus with other people? If you're someone who's given your life to Jesus Christ, I'd encourage you to pray today, right now, Who's someone that you know that needs to hear the message that the Messiah has come into the world? How will you share with them the way that Jesus has changed your life in an incredible way? If you're uncomfortable sharing your faith with other people, um, I'd like to offer you uh, this, this tool, this practice. Maybe uh, try answering the question in your own words. My life is different because Jesus has done this, um, whatever that's true for you. And if you feel uncomfortable answering that question for yourself, you know, maybe writing it out or, you know, uh, talking about it, then um, I would encourage you to get with someone that you know well, that knows you well, and just ask them, you know, tell me, how am I different uh, because I'm a Christian, because I know Jesus Christ? And uh, listen to their answer and, and be encouraged by that. Um, you know, help just hear from them uh, how you're a good person and you're a better person because Jesus Christ is a part of your life. And then armed with that story, uh, pray where God can send you out into the world to share the good news of Jesus Christ with people who desperately need to know that they're loved and they're forgiven just as you have received that love and forgiveness. So in response to today, respond to Jesus for the first time, ask for Jesus' help, and then share that good news of Jesus with others. Let's pray and give thanks to God together today for what's happened in our lives and then in this hearing of the word. Dear God of grace and truth, we thank you for, for your love and for your care and that you loved us so desperately that you came into the world so many years ago. God, we know that your message of love and forgiveness is as true today as it ever was and it will continue to be true for all eternity. We pray right now for the people that are worshiping online and here in person that have given their lives to Jesus for the first time. Encourage them, give them strength and hope, and bring around them a community of faith and care and help them to, to reach out to people that will offer them encouragement and love and support. God, we love you and we give you thanks for what you have done in our world and you continue to do through us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, amen. So now we come to the time in our worship service where we have the chance to experience the very real presence of Jesus Christ in our lives by receiving the bread and the cup of Holy Communion. Uh, we're going to join together in the great thanksgiving. You can find this in your hymnal on uh, page 13. We'll be kind of doing an abbreviated uh, version of this, but I'd like for you to respond uh, with the uh, sections that are, it'll be projected on the screen. You can also find those in your, in your hymnal on page 13. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You came into the world and were born in a manger so that we might receive the gift of life and be sustained by your presence. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks to God and he gave it to his disciples and he broke the bread and he gave it to them and he said, I offer my body to you. Do this as often as you're able in remembrance of me. My body is broken so that you might receive my presence with you. Then after the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to God and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as you're often as you're able in remembrance of me. Receive my forgiveness, receive my love, receive my presence now and always forever. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us that are gathered here together today and on these gifts of bread and cup and make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast again at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. In just a moment, those who are receiving communion will receive the gifts of bread and cup, and then we would invite all of you to come forward with your hands like this, in a posture of receiving, uh, just as we receive the gift of grace and forgiveness, not because of anything that we've done, but because it's a gift offered to us and the way that we offer precious gifts to our children, come and receive these good gifts of grace. We'll have a gluten-free station in the middle for those who have that need. And, and I want you to know that as United Methodists, we believe that everyone is invited to the table. You don't have to be a member of this church. You don't have to be a member of any church. All that you need is a sincere desire in your heart to have a relationship with Christ. If you've given yourself in love to Christ today, this is a wonderful way uh, to make that covenant solemn. All things are ready once you come and receive.
Would you rise now and receive this benediction? Go in grace and in peace, knowing that God loves you, that God cares about you so much that he came into the world. Surrender your heart and your life to him. Follow where he leads. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, amen. Jesus.
sou 